there's two drawers in there, and when you take them apart, oh. <laughs> you've got a lot of trouble. Oh. Well, is that on now? No. Uh -huh. well, you want me to turn it off? Yeah, I'm going to talk to you, but it doesn't need to turn off. Okay. So the Acme market opened in... 1939, uh, the spring of 39, the Donut Machine Corporation had negotiated with the State Road to fill the mill race, cover, take it, do away with it, with, uh, by providing they put uh, a tube, about a three-foot tube in it, to carry the water down for fire purposes in the mill. Uh, Mr. Harry Cook uh, bought a track of land behind the mill race uh, in the, right after the First World War. And he... I told you I used to be young. I'm very young now. Is this you? The baby. Oh, the baby. I was, oh, I was going to say it. I thought... Oh, it's okay. It's okay. No, I just. Uh, and this is. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. I'm not gonna sell it or anything. Okay, this is um a little same. bit earlier than. Yeah. Same house. Yeah, same. Right, right. I just did a different angle. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. Mm. Something nice. Yeah. Proceed. Right, you were talking about the mill race. Mr. Cooper? Mr. Harry Cooper bought a, a building behind the mill race and, uh, and a lane, which the entrance was on Westchester Avenue, which crossed the mill race. He's got a picture of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he outsmarted the Gamble Corporation who owned the mill. They own the mill race, the land under the mill race, and the dam that used to be. You remember the dam that used to be there? It washed out in 72. Yes, I remember that. All right. I'm telling you this because it might be interesting. The uh, Cooper got old Mr. Dan Murray to draw him a deed for the land in front of his property. Uh, uh, across the mill race. He, in other words, he bought the land and then they reserved the right of way over. The mill did. The mill did. Reserved the right of way over. And when they wanted to, he put his filling station, a pumps right over the mill race and put a filling station building just behind the mill race and built a new house thing. Is that what we call his filling station? Is that the one in Baltimore? It could have been. Because it was, it, it was it, I, 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 I'm not too sure whether it's Bethel, Bethlehem or Amico, the Lord Baldwin would be so far, he's like this. Because on the other side of the road, they built it after this was taken away. Then he built one on the other side of the road for his son. On, on the right hand side, going to Lord Baldwin, right across from it. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, uh, when the mill had made this deal with the State Road. The State Road operated the WPA. And anything done by the WPA, the material was, everything was furnished, and the work was done at no expense to the, the uh, whoever gives them the land, or whoever gives them title to it. Well, they went to Mr. Pickett, and there, I, I, was, I wasn't involved in the city, but I knew about it when I bought this land back. I they it. went to Mr. Pickett because of his being a commissioner? Or no, he, he owned, owned the land. Oh, owned wait, I'm, I'm a little ahead in the story. Mr. Pickett bought it from Mr. Cooper. Okay. Right? And then he operated. That's right. That's okay. right. Um, you got that straight now? I got that straight now. <laughs> he, bought, he bought it from Mr. He was operating the gas station? Operating the gas station, had a house, behind, lived in the house behind it, and Cooper had built. Uh, he, they went to him and told him he had to get the gas station off, off the mill base, thinking that they had title to it, but, and, and he only had a right-of-way in Grass Negress. 
Well, he got his lawyer and they, he told him to go to just to, he wasn't going to do it. So he said, I'll sell it to you for $35,000. Well, he said, we own it. So they didn't own it. They found out they didn't own it. They had a right away over his property that they had sold him, that the mill, Campbell Mill had sold him. So uh, he wouldn't think. And he, uh, and I had this property, and I had an outlet on Oral Avenue. It, it come up like this and went out like that. So you know how you got that oil, don't you? No. Uh, well, I you went under the, uh, you, when you went across the bridge, yeah. the river, you turned to your left. Mm -hmm. And it's a, and you went across a little, another bridge that was over the raise. Then you made another turn under the rail, under the uh, WBNA, and went up the well. Under the trolley? Under the trolley. Okay. That's the trolley. The WBNA was the trolley. So he, uh, uh, wouldn't flinch, and I, and he told me that we could work something out, I think it did, and he, uh, uh, I went ahead and built my building. I, I got a big picture somewhere just showing it just, uh, hadn't been finished in the, the windows were in, but the grading wasn't done in the front. This building. That building admin. right there. Uh -huh. And the mill race was way out here. So I had no way of getting straight across. So I went to Jim Clark, Judge Clark, the young Jim's father, mm -hmm. who was a very prominent lawyer, and I had no, nothing to do with politics then. And uh, I told him I'd give him $2,500 if he could get that case open again. The state dropped it, see, and he couldn't get title to the land. I told him I'd give him $2,500 to get it open and to get the thing going, because I had to build it back there. Big, big, 180 feet long, 45 feet wide, clear a span for that store. So, a man by the name of Levitt was the president of the Donut Corporation. You see, it had changed from Gamble Corporation to Donut Corporation. That's why he didn't know what had happened when he went to him and told him he was going to take over, see. So, finally, uh, he went to the state road and talked to them if they would open the case and do it with WPA labor, providing if they got their title. He said, yes. All right. I went home far from quite a while. However, uh, I had to buy Mr. Pickett up and Mr. Pickett and move his house inside. He had a store. Right beside of my building was a building set right out against the mill race, and it was paved over with concrete slab over the mill race, right in front of it. He could drive right up to that. And that, that just that. What kind of a store was that? Uh, or no, it, it, it was. Feed store? No, the feed store was probably a uh, restaurant, kind of a fast food restaurant, when I was talking to him about it. And, uh, I explained to him what my brother had done for him, my brother Jim, set him up in business. He was, he was a, a track walker for the B&O. That was his job. Mr. Pickett. Mr. Pickett. And when Jim had his liver stable down there where the post office is, then, uh, they had a store in which as you go into them, where you put the carriages and things, there was a store. And uh, he set Pickett up in the boy. How did he come to set him up? But if somebody was right in the store, I don't know who it was, had a food store, grocery, mm -hmm. and Jim would take people home. He'd walk down and way up the road with no automobile for the other days, cobblestone curve up the street. Mm -hmm. And Jim wouldn't handle them all and said, Mr. Pickett said, uh, uh, what was his first name? Gordon, uh, Gordon was a boy's name. I forgot Mr. Pickett's first name. Was Ed? Yeah, Ed, that was him. Ed, yeah, that's right. He had a, Harry, a brother, Harry, which is Ed, Ed Pickett. And he, uh, I said to him, or Jim said to him, he says, Ed, he says, you might as well bring your, get your car and come down and help haul these pastors on. He said, you, we can't, uh, I can't handle them all. He said, I'll let you do it. So he made a little extra money. So, uh, 
Jim said to him, he says, Ed, says, why don't we open a store of our own here and sell the groceries and take the people home or deliver and whatnot. So Jim took him in. That, 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 the lease must have been up. I don't, I, I don't think it was a lease. It just day by day rent that store for some reason. Anyhow, they started to the store for everything. And that's where the post office is. Where the post office is now. Yes. And uh, the post office is on three pieces of property. It's on one of the brothers, one of the kill singers, which is on the corner, and Joe Lasher. Oh. Where, where Reed, and wait a minute, Reed is in the, where Joe Lasher was. So it might have been all of Jim's. I'm not, I know they took Joe Lasher's down because they, uh, they built that new Ford place on the land that, uh, where the Reed is now. Oh, I see. That was the Ford Garage? Ford Garage. Anyhow, uh, Mr. Pickett said to Jim, he said, look, this place isn't big enough for our school. It wasn't very big, it wasn't near the basis room. It was an office at one time, I guess, when they had a lot of horses to put in down there. So he went up to the corner and bought on the corner of Court Avenue, uh, where Old Street might have been there when you came in. Yeah, was it a grocery store there? Yeah, it was gone. Gone, yeah. well. He bought that corner from Fagley. Fagley, I think, was the right name. And boy, he made a lot of money. He really made a lot of money over a big, a nice store, and it was good size, and he made a lot of money. So he made so much that he retired and sold, and sold the store to Holtzwig, and he went down there and bought that from Harry Cook. And then for the gas station. Where the gas station was and, and the house and that uh, the other store stood on the end. Did he live in the house? Yes, he lived in the house. And had a little station in front of the house. And, the, and he could come in from the, uh, right off of, off of Westchester Avenue. He, Westchester went in and then went like that and then around the street. Uh -huh. Turned to the yeah. left as soon as he went across. And then the, where the road is now, Continental Milling Company was there. Right. Shapiro. Uh -huh. Joe Shapiro. Is that a different milling than Gambrels? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's Joe's father had bought that uh, mill from the Gamble Company, I believe, Old Man Shapiro. And that land on the other side went with it ever that day, so they, it was a kind of a, a warehouse building there, then he, he converted it into a feed mill, grinding feed. And that's where the road is now. It was over almost to that, that the stone house little bit east of it, south of it. However, I, I said to uh, Mr. Pickett, I said, look, I've got a bill in there. It's going to make your business worth a lot more money. How about you and I get together and, and, and I'll buy your right away and have your houses moved back and everything. And your gas station, everything will be just like it is if you pick it up and just set it back 30, 40 feet or whatever, the width of the milk. 35 feet of people. And he let me have it for $3,500. And he asked them $35,000. So I had to pay for that. But you had to move his house. I had to move the house too. I, I don't know exactly what it cost. Those days labor was very cheap. Dollar an hour, all you want. And then 50 cents an hour kind of labor was even more. However, uh, Mr. Clark had to get the deed straightened out because there were, uh, I see he told me, 14 still had, people had stock in that mill. And he had to get every one of them to sign the, the deed. So he finally got them all done, and they came out, and I had my building almost built, and they started to fill the mill. And I went to Levitt before, just uh, when they, they cut him off, I went to him and asked him, about putting a bridge across. He said, it's going to cost you a cent if you can get the mill base filled up. So if you don't, it's not going to work So that, that's why I had to do. And I've always done things that other people wouldn't do, it seemed like. So then did they fill the, all the mill rates? All mill rates were filled up. And that was in 39 or? 39. Yeah. I, the store opened in the latter part of 39, they did it. 
What did they do with those stone walls that were on either side, just knock them down? Yes, oh sure. Into the mill, right? Yes. Yeah. And they they took they see they brought the road way over and run the road down on the mill race side then so the truck could park down there and load and unload mm -hmm. at the at the donut machine corporation. Right. What they fill it with? The mill race? Dirt. Just dirt. Oh yeah. I'll just haul it in. Yeah. But you said you put a pipe in there. They put a pipe in first, they did it. A big pipe like this one. Carry the water. Carry enough water for fire protection down at the mill. See, that mill race went down there and crossed over the, un, in the mill yeah. and went under the mill lake. And Does it still do that? Huh? Does it still do it that? It still runs through that, sure. Yeah. And that, uh, and, and the empty is back into the river. Uh-huh. Right. See, they had big water wheels over there at one time. Right. Do you remember those water wheels? Yeah. What happened? They just tore them out? I they don't know what they did. They, was, they, they put steam in to uh, uh, when the mill burned down in 1914. On uh, the left-hand side of the road, that was the old red mill, I always call it, because it was red. And that's where we all put the wheat in. The left-hand side... Going toward the bottom. Going toward the bottom. See, the road went right down in front of the mill, right, right down the river. Yeah, I've seen those pictures, yeah. yeah. Uh, then we... Uh, then it made a curve to go up to, to where the road is today, didn't it? Uh, when, well, where it is today, they went, went straight across the mill race. And, and took it around and took that one, that one of those houses out, you know, one of them elegant houses out. Yeah, yeah. I tore one down, I don't know who owned it uh, at, at previous years, but I know who owned it when I bought it. You said, was that a frame house or a stone? Frame and stone. Back part of it was frame yeah. and front part of it was stone. And, and that was down on near your Acme Market? Right where that. the Acme Market sat, was where that house sat, on the back. From the, the front wasn't that where the front of the back part was, it was a lawn in front of it. Yeah. Between the mill, I mean, between the race and the house, there was a lawn. Beautiful lawn. What kind of condition was that house in when you tore it down? Had anybody lived in it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I bought it from an estate. The, uh, you never thought of moving it at that time? Oh, no. To somewhere else. Well, you know, they're moving it, George Ellicott's house. I know they're talking about it. Uh, they, those days, you couldn't have moved it because you'd have to come across the mill race. Oh, you, wouldn't know where, you had to go across the mill race to move it. There were houses on uh, between that and and uh, Westchester Avenue, and there was an alley come in off of Westchester Avenue to come back to that property. They could either come there or they owned it right away, owned the ground in front of McDonald's, where I told you that you used to have a, a, a hotel for people to come out get off the street car, you know, go right in. That's McDonald's, old. we all call it McDonald's. That was that from now, McDonald's. is that gone, or is that the that's tavern? The, that's that's that, that tavern. That's that, that tavern, a but, a Valley View or something they call it. Whatever happened to Pickett's gas station and house? We then? moved it back. Yeah, but then... When, well, when the road come along, uh -huh. you see, they took, they cut right through the set, half of my building they took. They want me to keep half of it, and, and my land. Because you come across the bridge, see it, and you run right straight. When you come across that bridge, you'd run right into this building. Which it, part of the building? Right this there. Part? Right here. Right here. This On is this the south side. side. Right there, you'd run right into it. When you come across the street. And I parked all up and down, yeah. see, on top of the mill road. Because there was no road there. It was, I, I had a right to use it all the way over to where you come down the oil. Uh, a piece of paper I brought for you. I'm going to draw on this thing because I've got a lot of pictures in there. Right. These people. I was looking now. Now, these people here were visiting. Uh, that's me, and that's Russell. Oh, uh huh. And this is Janie Strongberg, who's my sister. And this is Jim Mox's father. He sure looks like him. Don't he, though? Wow. Yep. That's his father. I remember when he took that rascal. <laughs> I had a good memory from when I was young, but I don't have much oh. now. Now, are these your parents? No. no. That's my cousin. And oh. and this is Leon Stern and Erwin Stern. They used to live up, up Farm here. Farm up here yeah, on 99. Right there, that old house where you know where you turn to go to Ottawa. Uh -huh. That's where they were born and raised. And, but they were friends of, of Jim, see? And uh, they t took this picture, and that's the house, and it faced 
uh, out this way, and the old road I was telling you about used to go from here, right down here, mm -hmm. and, and turn and go down that way, right. and go across the sucker branch and come over and come down Church Road. That's the way the road was yeah. Pop told me when he first bought this. And it went into Ellicott City. Went into Ellicott City. And over to Daniel's. Uh, no, it, yeah, well, it went up, went up right up through here, uh, went up the road here, and then hit church, we call church mm -hmm. lane, mm -hmm. and that was the way the the people got many years ago. That must have been the first road. Yeah, like and then, uh -huh. then they thought it was lane all the way up, and they called it Jones Town Road because there's nothing but Jones lived up there. It's called Jones Town. Right. That's what it was called when I was a kid. I remember when you changed the name to <laughs> right. Well, that's the old house. Yeah, see, the names are written on the back here. Mrs. It says Mrs. James R. Moxley Jr. Now, no. or does the picture belong to her? Who would have been Mrs. James Moxley? Jr.? That's Junior, his wife. I mean, his his uh, uh, grand uh, his daughter in law. Daughter in law. Yeah, but she's Junior. not on the picture. No, she's not on that's the picture. That's who the picture. This picture was to. made. Uh, well, I was. I'm 1908, it says. That's right. I said it was about three years old. Okay. That's you were right. born in a five. 19, I'll be 82 in January, 17. Okay. Nothing happened. Now, <laughs> this is my first cousin, and Jim's first cousin. So no, take, this, yeah. take the back end of Okay, uh, Irving Stern. That's Irving here. Stern. Right, and then May Moxley. That's right. Then yeah. Leon Stern. And that was his wife. No, uh, or sister. sister. Yeah. Okay. Bertha Lindsay comes. Right there. And was she a cousin? Or no, a she was a friend of this lady. They lived together. And how was May Moxley related to you? First cousin. She was your cousin. Yeah. How and about that? That's Mildred, my sister. That's Mildred. That's okay. Right. And this is Russell. Okay. And that's, and that's me. Now you were. I'm you the three oldest of that second group. Oh, second group. Second okay. Group. And then <laughs> Jim was your, your half brother. brother. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Mildred Russell, that's James Senior. Jane, this is that's Jane. Jane. That's your sister. That's sister. My sister. Jim. She was 13 years old when I was. And how old was Jim? 22. I believe Mark was 19. Is that right? Is that much of a difference? Yeah, it did for long. He was 87 at the time. Right. And so this was the house that you said stood over by Normandy Shopping Center. No, it stood across the road. I mean Normandy Bowling. It, it stood right straight across the road from Normandy entrance. Mm -hmm. that, that cross was put in there to get into that house. I see. And eventually, I mean, that's where your parents... Bought it in 1891. I told you uh -huh. that. Sure. Right. And then uh, it just stood and eventually... Just well, they, right. they, people lived were in they? it. Oh, they were living in it when they tore it down. Oh, I see, see, Jim, the road... When the road came through, the right away of the road come through the center of the house. Oh. Just like if you're back of the house, the road come through here like that. Uh -huh. And they told Jim, as long as it was in the mock's the name, it wouldn't have to be torn down. Uh -huh. they, they, see, it was in the right away. Now, it wasn't near the pavement. It was 30, yeah. 35. It, the, the pavement was within 20 feet of the edge of the house. Mm -hmm. And the right away was way over in the middle. Yeah. And they told him, that if, as long as he owned it, it wouldn't have to be torn down. But as soon as we sold it, when the partner people bought it, mm -hmm. now that was it, uh, they made them tear it down. That was Normandy Woods. Uh, Normandy Woods is part of it. Yeah, that yeah. come off of my of sister's place down there, or my other place. Off of Rogers Avenue. Yeah. The yellow, out uh, of the green house. That's right. right. That's right. I'd like to make a copy of this picture. You can make a copy of it. Okay. I'd like to also Xerox this, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, and right. Xerox it because of the sure. Acme market. Okay. Okay, now, uh, well, I asked you what happened to Mr. Pickett's house and gas station. We moved them right back. Right, and then... Now, when the road comes through, there, where it is right. now, right. they bought him out, uh, and they bought uh, me out. And he had a, another house he built back further. It's still there. It's got... Uh, you know, taking brick siding on it, I think. It's still there behind that filling station. Now, the filling station that's there now is part of my building, where uh, my building is. That first filling station on your left. Right, on the left, that's right. Yeah. That's that way back. Uh -huh. 
But that is, that's part of this. That's the back end of this building where they cut the road through. They took up the building was 180 feet long, see, uh -huh. and they just cut half of it out. And I, I, I wouldn't take half of it. I just made a payment for the whole thing, and they sold it to Pickett. Right. The Gordon Pickett. This Ed Pickett had died, I think. Okay, and then he, he opened it as a gas station. Gas station. And okay. that's on the left side, left which is going into Baltimore. Right. That's had a number of different owners. Had yes. That gas I've heard of it. And then the picket house that. That um, was there. The, the one that sits back was the one he built, and I built the Acme. He built one back behind. And it's back. Of, of and the backed up to the Acme on the side. Where's their access from Westchester then? Or back, all the Westchester, yeah. You get back to those houses. Those houses. Yeah. Okay. The front, it, it's still there. It's front from Westchester. Uh -huh. That house I was telling you about. Double house. I believe it's two. He made it, you know, uh, Duplicate. Duplicate. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, I'm clipping. I don't know what you're interested in, but this <laughs> kind of amused me. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen it. No. Well, I give Martin Miller a good custom about that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I had to. He had to think it's crazy. Uh, this was what year? 67. Yeah. Okay, we were out here then. But we didn't get the News America. This is a point that I, I was kind of clear in 67. Yeah, that's it. It says Moxley's appointment draws no one's anger. I agree, yeah, that's right. Because you were appointed to the um, Metropolitan, Metropolitan Commission. Or oh, 67. 67, yeah. I thought you said 67. No. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it in there. <laughs> well, I told her I didn't know what you were going to say. Well, that's the pol that was the politics uh, yes. of, of the day. Another I beat him every time I run against him. He, <laughs> he got appointed then. The man that uh, that one for me died. This is, is this Judge Miguel. Let's see. Thomas Scott. Judge Scott. He was president of the board. Yeah, he was president of the Water County Commission then. Well, that was the new addition. Yeah. Commissioner Norman Moxley, staff of the here that's you, and Arthur Pickett is here. That, that's right. Oh, it doesn't identify that, but it sure looks like that's it. That's Judge McGill. That's him, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, there's uh, uh, 61, August. Six, well, that's when we opened it. Uh, that, well, you opened it in 62. You've got the, uh, we've got the cornerstone. Yeah. Uh, laying the cornerstone in. September in 62. Right. And right. this, they must have just broken ground. Oh, we did. That's what uh, we're doing. That's nice. This is another old one. Okay, this okay, this is when they just started then uh, for this same addition, yes. August sixty one. Mm -hmm. right, Wait a minute, I don't understand what Oh the courthouse the addition. Courthouse, right. Yeah, we built that on know that, yeah. Right. And we built it for be six stories high, put an elevator shaft in it and everything, didn't put the elevator in. And then toward all that we just put this put this ten billion million dollars. No, years nine million. <laughs> Not, yeah, nine, ten million, right? That's years ago, doing. Norman used to be a player's team. Yes, yeah. that's what he was telling me, that that's the way he got his start. That was the dumbest picture for a man to take. That took yeah. a, we were around the corner. Now, see, this is plastic. That's plastic, that molding was all yeah, on yeah. the inside, the outside wood. Because uh -huh. I uh, took a piece of that and made, this, made a te template to, to make that mold all the way around. I did all I did it. You know, he plays to Rosa Ponzell's home, I mean his company. Is that? Rosa Ponzell's, Alpha Gwen Vanderbilt, and uh, uh, we Goucher were, College the same year. Yeah, Goucher College. Had a half a mile ring spout on his own. Goucher College did. Uh, he worked hard in his day. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure but you did. I went up at the, the school, the vocational She'll school. She'll read it, honey. So is it? It just says that. Uh, you demonstrate the lost art of making plaster cornices. That's right. But he should have taken a picture of the cornice. That's I, right. I run the cornice up there. It was a big one about this high, so you just a short piece oh. so they could see what it was done. Now, what part of this is plaster and what is wood? Um, the wide part is plaster. The and the against the wall here. is the wood. wood. Now, she, she, she doesn't know which. I do. This is plaster, and that is plaster back to that molding. That molding is wood. And this is a piece of wood. And made them all to run this plant. You run that, you don't, you see, you run that on the track. 
you make a prank and ruin it and you want to talk because it is. Okay, it's all fine. All fine. So, are your walls plastic in the rest of the house? Yeah. Are they? Everything's plastic. But today they don't do that. Oh, no. No, I know. Uh, of course, we've been here for 28 here. years. I have a four year friend of mine. He's over in uh, the Capitol, right next to the cornfield. He calls it the middle cornfield. And he had a leak in his ceiling, I mean, in the toilet over the kitchen. And that's the place for the leak. And they had to cut a piece out to get up to this leak. And uh, he, he never could get anybody to do it. So I ride, he comes here and takes me up and takes lunch once in a while. I pay for it, but he, you know, he, he, he I go, we go right. and reminisce, that's right. what we do. <laughs> so anyhow, he likes so much I had to go, and he asked me if I'd fix that sheet rock. The sheet rock, now, it wasn't plastic, oh. it was sheet rock. If that had been plastic, it would been easy. Yeah. But they had to cut it, get a piece of sheet rock, cut it out, fit that hole, so that long, but that long. And the gall it is, then they have to put the stick them on it. Can't use plaster on it, because it won't stick to it. Anyhow, that prepared something. I didn't have enough. So I, I roughed it in, then went back and did it Sunday afternoon. You just did it now? Yeah, You're still doing this? Yeah, I did it for him. <laughs> just did it for him. No, not much. <laughs> no. No, I don't. I did, I, I did it as a favor. Oh, I, no, I know. You got up on the ladder and everything? Yep, on a step ladder. I guess if you can go moose hunting, you can do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I did it for him. And I, I might go with, did you, you tape it and spack on it yeah, and everything? Yeah, all that. And uh, I had to. We went to church first, and then he came home <laughs> and did that. I had to. to you can't you can't travel it smooth. That's material. You can't travel it smooth. It, you have to sand it. Sand it, it yeah. So I left. It, that, it was pretty smooth. It wasn't smooth as that. Yeah. If it had been plastered, it would have been because you can travel plaster, but you can't travel that stuff. It just rolls right off of you. Now, when you built this house, did you do your own plastering? No, a man that worked for me. Did uh, uh, he did. I didn't know. What I, did I, I did this. I did this. One of the men, the man went with me uh, that I went moose hunting with. He and I put this cornice all up in here and and uh, and fix that up. That was 27 years. Yeah. You might find this interesting. Yeah. Is that the flood? No, this is when Sucker Branch went dry. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where they got the water. That, that was in city. 57. Seven, that's right. There was a drought which that's right. which caused that. That's uh, right. Did the tank and everything go dry? Well, we What's had to it? haul it from Caton's fire hydrant on big tank trucks and put it in the reservoir. See, yeah. I was catching hell for that, excuse the expression, because I was county commissioner. <laughs> and, but they did have, uh, it said, two artesian wells, and they went dry. Well, no. the artesian wells were right down in this bottom. I looked for that picture of me sitting on that dam, and I couldn't find it. It's here somewhere. Uh, when you say right down here in this bottom, yeah. uh, where you know where Lancelot has got that. What do they yeah, call it? Lady England. Lady England. Yeah. Well, right down in behind that house, there was two. They drilled those wells in, in 19. Let's see, 20. It wasn't like 19. Well, the 13 is drilled two wells down there. Is that your farm there? Yeah. Well, Jim Gaither owned that big that farm, that mm -hmm. entire farm, mm -hmm. up to our boundary, up to this boundary where uh, where this house was down here. Right. Uh, he was a uh, he the one on the delivery stable down there at one time. Right. He built that. He was a, a what do you call a man that always trying to improve something? I forget what you call it. Anyway, he uh, uh, put a dam in there on Sucker Branch. See, Sucker Branch comes right down to and right to it's all the way in his place to get the river of mm -hmm. All right. He built the dam, and he pumped water for steam in. Didn't have gas. For well, himself? For the city. Oh, city. He built a reservoir. You know where you turn off to go down off of Court Avenue to go down the hill? So right on the right hand side it was the big open open reservoir. Big open reservoir. Right. You got a picture of it, but it was News American had a bunch of pictures of that at one time. Yeah. So I got a 
And where was the tank then? There was no tank. But there was. It was un- well, wait a minute. Okay. That this was built underground, uh, level ground level, uh-huh. right. and it was about 12 feet deep, like a swimming pool. It was built. It was about 60 feet long, maybe 70 feet long, and about 40 feet wide, out of brick and plastered over the brick to keep uh-huh. the water. From. They didn't know then that the brick won't hold water. You know, it a seat to it. So they put the uh, cement plaster over uh, The water, the first one he built was just a round, round tank, a uh, 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 pond, level, ground level, and they would, had an artesian well there. An artesian well is a well that when uh, it's got plenty of water, it'll run out at the top and, uh, and run in there. And they had a, a building over it. I you remember the real well. And uh, it, it was covered. This, this ground part was covered. And this artesian well, and the water used to run without anybody, no, without pumping it. It just run out, right. and there, but it wasn't enough to suffice. suffice. And he put it down to his place as to where the livery stable was. Then he built the dam down here, and he put a two inch main, just two inch pipe, right straight up the valley, and come out right where the uh, that big uh, office building is now. And they had a st- little st- uh, uh, manhole, and it run into the manhole where it was pumped for that uh, that uh, steam engine. Then electricity came up the road, and finally they put electric electric in there with an electric motor and a four cylinder pump run up and down like I I ordered it many times when I was a kid from my father. And Mark, and when you saw the picture, he he operated it from the time they put it in. But when he got married and moved up in Montgomery County, the father operated it. And we dug the pipe up, went through the, and it was a, a two-inch pipe, and it went through Linwood's property. But he must have got a right-of-way for him or something. I don't know. So uh, then finally they put a six-inch main, Merrill Waterworks it was called from this manhole we're talking about, up Rogers Avenue and come in right below the view there, right below the bank, there's a road goes down that bottom, well that pipe, that was a right of way to this piece of land that he reserved and sold off of his farm to whatever company it was. I remember the man's name was Biggs, I, I can remember that, but I don't know, I don't that know. the water, the water people. The water people, Biggs, I mean, he was a big man. It was a corporation. Maryland Water Works. They had a lot of problems with that water, didn't they? Yeah, but look at what I'm trying to do. I have to clean that reservoir out. I could see that it was just below where it was. There was a ditch down through there. Uh, it just opened the main. Opened the main that went down to the other city and, and had a. a how did they keep it pure? It well, that's what I'm going to tell you okay. about. <laughs> you wait till I tell you, you wonder why anybody lived. <laughs> yeah, I know. It went down to, uh, we'd have to go there, and drain the reservoir, and clean it out. The bees got in it. Rats got in it. Yeah. And when we cleaned it one time, I'll never forget long ago, I, I was helping my father, see. I was maybe 12 years old. I'll guarantee you there were rats stuck to that big yeah. stringer. Listen, without any hair, the hair had gone off of them, and they were just stuck there. Mm. People That's drank that. Nobody got sick and died. Nobody yeah, they did sick. get sick, though. The newspaper, every once in a while, I would read about epidemics in but Elegant I don't, City. I, I don't remember any of them getting sick. Yeah, there were a number of people who had the news media in those days. That we had what, they, they, put, they put chlorine in it. See, they had a chlorine. Put chlorine it must have tasted good. <laughs> so, good. I, when I was elected commissioner, they still had that pump down there and that kind of water. Here and the Metropolitan yeah. Commission, that's what they, he got mad about because he put me on that Metropolitan Commission. Harry Murphy told me, I only lost for about 10 votes. And, and, and the man that won died and Miller got the appointment. Miller wasn't elected, he got the appointment. To the commission. To the commission because the man that died was a Republican, see, and not a Democrat. And, uh, so anyhow, he, the we, uh, lost the train of thought when I tell you what it meant. Oh, it's about the, the uh, tank. The, yeah. the, the water, water. Water. So uh, it, it 
the sucker branch was so dry, it wasn't that wide. And usually it was running like that, and about that deep. It wasn't that wide. I took pictures of people, health department come out, and I went to, and we were the Board of Health, you see, the, the commissioner was then. So I went up there with him, right there that spot, right down below where the shop center is now, and he took things. So people had cattle up the road, all Fred Todd, where his place is over here, he had a hulk, uh, a lot of hogs, and that little stream, they wallowed in it and run down into that branch. Had a little bit of a drain, didn't so they helped what made him get rid of the hole. He had to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. now, uh, that was before I was commissioner, now when they when they they uh, had the trouble with the hole. Well, then, um, uh, when it was a dry period of time, what happened? People in Alaska City the, didn't have water. Yeah, they hauled it. We hauled it in the tank hauling? truck from over here at Cape and drilled it to push fire. Well, did you <coughs> put it in the reservoir, or yeah. did you put it in what was it? I well, then they built <coughs> of a storage tank. They built a storage tank uh, some years after what I was talking about. Yeah, they is. built it. I don't know. I, I wasn't married when it. It was there when we got married, wasn't it? Oh, that big tank <coughs> in the waiting inside going down to the I can't remember because we had a well at home. I think. Yeah. Well, we all had wells. Yeah. Uh, everybody had wells out in the country. But yeah. in Ellicott City, they... They had wells in Ellicott City. It was four wells right on the pavements in Ellicott City. Is that where the Oldfield uh, pumps were? One of them was right there. Just below, almost across from the farm. You know that little open yard but, uh, between Hill Street and Merriman Street? There's a big stone house that's yeah, in the middle. Yeah. Then there's two, a double stone right, house. Right. So we're in that yard. There was a pump. There was a pump. There was a pump in the yard, and there was a pump for that double house on the main, on the, on the pavement. Exactly. And that was one. Right down below the Howard House, in the, right in the sidewalk, right. there was a pump. Just at the, below the Howard House, maybe 15 uh, yeah, feet, I've seen a picture. there was a pump there, and down on Main Street below, there was one down there, just below where the bank on that side, right, was, right, right in yeah. there somewhere. I've seen and there were trees, there were trees, on, the big trees along the street then. Norman, when did they have the, the toilet that flushed? And we went down into that Oh, well, they had that. Uh, they always had that. Until the 60s. Yeah. I remember well, that. that the smell, was, don't you? And in the summer, they would put uh, lime in it or something in the street. Yeah, we'd have to lime it. We'd have to down the lime it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? Run right, right down. Okay, okay. So and on the north side of the street, it went down, and under under the street went across the eastern valley. We always thought it was the Tiber. Tiber. Tiber Alley. Yeah. Called. Well, that's where it went right underneath there. Everything from the north side of the street run down the st street in a, in a tube, a little tube of that thing, and went across and dumped, dumped right there. Why didn't they want to bring out public water from the car? People know they wanted to spend the money. Charlie Miller thought that he was the boss of Harry Kent. And we were building the shopping center, and he thought. Well, well, the shopping center was built you. after the war, uh, the war, the war after. Yeah. I built that building down there in 39, and he was still around there in Green Cross Garage on, in the alley, back of the post office. Anyhow, uh, he uh, always, listen, did you know what he cost Harrod County? I'm going to tell you, cost it's like, you can preach this if you want to. He cost the Harrod County $600,000 by fighting the Metropolitan Commission, I was a county commissioner, see, but the Metropolitan Commission had hired Whitman and Rickhart to make a study of the need for water and sewer in Ellicott City District, Elkridge District, uh, uh, Dorsey District, and Savage District, four places. They made a study, and the Metropolitan Commission had to pay them for it. And he had nowhere else. They don't have a damn thing to do with the county, but he's a blowing his top. So anyway, we did that. I mean, the, the Metropolitan Commission did it. The County Commission had to okay it because we had to be responsible. I had to sign any bonds they sold. I had to sign if I was chairman. Mm -hmm. and whoever was chairman had to sign the bonds to guarantee the faith and credit to count. So anyhow, he, he the law was he could take ten citizens and file a protest if they planned to do anything. So they planned on putting sewer up Sucker Frank, where it is now, up in Elkridge, Dorsey, and, and Sanford. 
the Metropolitan Commission had all this to do. I didn't. I was. You were not. You I was were, yeah. county commission. Sure. So anyway, he got. Listen to this. He got all his employees up here to sign this petition. He got ten of Held it up for two years, three years, and, Whit and, and the man of Whitman Rickard told me, he said, Mr. Monster, he just cost Harrod County six hundred thousand dollars to do it. Now, when he got to be county commissioner, they had to do it. The health department ever that somebody made him do it, and it it, because he said it, the price had kept going up over six hundred thousand dollars. I didn't miss getting up and give him a good talk about that too. Well, didn't he do that so that you couldn't build the shopping center? I, he thought the oh, he thought the shopping center couldn't open or couldn't be built without it. But we had a, a sandy soil and we built a big septic, septic system, and it was approved by the state health department, not the county health department, the state health department approved. And we never had any trouble with it. I'd hate to tell you what choked it up. <laughs> well, don't tell. Me. Well. Then now, now you're on public service. Oh yes, yeah. we put public service. But, but Charlie Miller then had to do it when he was county commissioner. He had to sign the bonds. He was chairman of the board, I believe, at well, that time. When we, you know, we moved out here in '62, and we we built our house on septic. Sure, you did. Because there were very few areas yeah. where there was public sewer. There was no public sewer. The public sewer was the Tiber branch. We call it Turd Run. Excuse the <laughs> expression. Well, that's all being recorded, you know. I don't care. That's right. We're going to put it in the historical <laughs> <laughs> And your great-grandchildren are going to listen to Grandfather, Ooh, right? <laughs> anything against the Rotary. And he was fighting me. He didn't want me to do this. He, when I built that across the uh, uh, the Sackman Market, he would have had something to say about that, but it was in Baltimore County. Well, Norman, before he died, then he became friendly with oh, you. Oh, God. He would ask you advice about that. Come and ask me advice about this and advice about that. Sit right beside him at the Rotary Club and talk. To well, you know, that's politics. That's politics. Yeah. That's, that's what's right. going on in Washington today. That's a disgrace for to have to have this problem because it's, well, it's not a damn thing to politics. But all it is, it, it was the best thing ever happened if they had gone ahead and the, 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 the Congress would have gone ahead and approved this thing to be done like it was done. It would have been the best thing ever happened it's been done. Now those people over there listening to all this crap that's going on right on that television right now. I know. It's a it's a shame. That's right. I don't care if Republican or Democrats, you've got yeah. to do what's best did for your you, country. Did right. you ever see this picture? Is that Sam Kaplan? Yeah. Oh, I wonder yeah. how he is, do you know? Well the last I heard he had broken a hip and yes. he was in the hospital. Yeah. I we, haven't heard. We went in we stopped to see him one day when he was in therapy, but that was a month ago. That, that was a nice thing. What year was this? Well, right, and then they ha just had one on his 85th birthday. Yeah, we were there. They were just down on Main Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were right. there. A little rest from there. Yeah, I went to school with him. He was He's a little bit older than you, though. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's four years old. I can't remember this a few minutes ago. Yes, I remember he reading saw that. that thing. Mm -hmm. They were doing it on Valentine's Day. Yes. That's so nice. <laughs> you don't remember that? <laughs> then I came across this thing. Digging around in there. Oh, this is uh, one of the. Uh, yeah, this is not Columbia, but it's another. Uh, you were here in Columbia story. Oh yeah, yes, I remember. Uh, you know, again, we hadn't been here very long, but I read the newspapers all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew Tom Harris. Oh, I mean, well, I know I Tom, Tom Harris to his job. Now know? they're talking about moving him. I said, I would be, it's wrong to put somebody it's just to have that job. She's talking about putting Knowles as a, and Knowles don't know more about being. He doesn't qualify. That's what I'm talking about. And Harris would be. Harris was a, 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 was a train planner when we hired him. Uh, we hired Wheeler. Wheeler was, went to South America to play, uh, from my area, and we hired. Uh, when we first started, it was 51, you know, you had to feel your way around there. That's right. Because there was no planning, there wouldn't well, be any right. planning. I introduced right. all that because I saw what was happening. Well, I hope Tom survives. I hope so, he too. has all the knowledge, all the background, you know, all That's the work right. he will. Anything she, she to over anything. Now, I want to show you an important picture. <laughs> 
I have to get my magnifying glass out. This is you as a baby, huh? Yep. And that was christened up in the cemetery up at Good Shepherd. It was. Well, these are corn. They're trees. Corn christened in the cemetery. No, but this I was, I'd christened it to church. To, I said the church stands oh. at the cemetery. <laughs> All right. Now, but this is, these are corn shocks, aren't they? Yeah, well, that was the field. field right side of that. You see? Well, what were you, about a year and a half when you were christened? Because you're standing there, Well, I you was know. christening that. I didn't say that. Oh, that's not the date you No, were but I said oh. I was christened okay. at that church. Right, you and had mentioned that. my father that. And, and the two Hansons. They were about his age. They lived back in. Hansons? Hansons. The Roy Hansons. That's his. I'm talking about Louis' father. Okay, I don't know that. That's I don't know if you ever heard about this that came across this in this video. No, I didn't know there were Moxleys that were in the Peggy Stewart. Oh, burning. yes. I got a question. Maybe I'll show you that. Good job. I'm not sure this is. You can't lie. Wait, I don't think that's Right, I've read about that, but I didn't know that there was a Moxley. Um, Nehemiah Moxley. Was a part of that. A part of that. Judge McGill even told me that. Is that right? Because he said he searched the records on it. He lived up there near the Moxley family. Well, he lived at one time. Nehemiah but, lived to be 99. Yeah. Old <laughs> livers, huh? Okay. Well, going to do that. I believe it. <laughs> That's marvelous. Well, How old was your father? 87. 87. How about your mother? Did she? She know? died in 73. Uh, and Mark lived to be how old? 94. 94. Yeah, I remember Mark, yeah. Uh, he was got, his mind there. was alert. Yeah, right. I've got a something about that monster plan. I did our friend over here. Yeah. That's my father, me, Bob, and son, and Carol. I mean, the elder and the children. And this is this is your son, Bob? Yeah, no, I didn't Bob, I didn't no. Bob. This is his older brother. It's Your your oldest son? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that you had another child. Yeah. Is he still living? Yeah. So this is when we oh, first isn't that looked here. Yeah. Right. And this is when we were selected in nineteen fifty. I was parents that they put the name in this rotation. This man had been on the board the four years. Yeah, uh -huh. he'd been on the board four years prior, and I want him to be chairman because I had nothing, to, no knowledge of, and it insisted on my taking chairman. <laughs> so I had to take chairman and take How the board. Forty-five, I guess. You were elected in fifty. In fifty. The That's right. That was, uh, and it was born nineteen five, so it makes me forty-five. Right. Yeah. I had not heard of. Mm. of is it Roby? Roby Moore. Oh. He was a farmer, and this man was a farmer, and I was a businessman. Uh -huh. Where was Scott? Was that uh, Melville Scott? Charlie, Charlie? Charlie's uncle. Uncle. Melville, Melville Scott was brother. his brother. <coughs> oh. And here's, here's uh, Mr. Uh, Roby Moore, Mr. Brown, Mr. Scott, Benny Miller, and me. Now, Mr. Brown, was he the superintendent? Yeah. Of Hubert? yeah. Well, now, where were you? This is at some kind of convention. I you guess. Got it. Howard. Yeah. Howard. It was, you see, the. Uh, oh, the, yeah. The, the right. I only put names. I, I know what it was. It was Association of County Commissioners. I should have written that in there. Uh, a, a convention of, of, of Maryland. Like NACO, Maryland Association of Counties, you know, we have there's that organization. Yeah, well, they, they, they are. Like they are Spun off of the commissioners. He was all commissioners then. Right. And That's, yeah, Mr. I didn't realize Mr. Brown was such a big man. Yeah, he was big. He lived right across from Slack's room. Well, at this time, was he still superintendent of schools? Well, I guess he was. He was a very important position. Because he went went on to become. Um, well, he had a political job after that, didn't he? I read somewhere that. Me, no, I can't remember. He had some kind of job at the courthouse. I'd have to look back now, but um. now here is the 58th election. Then Charles Scott, I said, "You elected. You're going to be that chairman. I'm not going to take that job." And he was chairman, 
and me and Picky. And this is Gene Stevens. She's still down is there. Is that Jean? Yeah, I work with Jean. Yeah, oh, Jean. my gosh. That doesn't look like her. What year? Does it say what year? Like it's uh, 58. I can tell you when it is. You should write on there, Norman. Yeah. Well, who is this woman? Uh, it's Rosalie Hall. She was there from long before I was elected. She been, she worked there in, in the 30s. And who are these men? That's Lloyd Taylor. He was the clerk. Oh, okay. And this okay. is a, a Reggie Malloy. Oh, is that rich? Oh, okay. Yeah. Now it's kind of rich. And that's think. Mr. Pickett. Yeah. yeah. You and know, Mr. he's Scott. the father of uh, Carolyn Ridgely, isn't he, Norman? Yeah. Was he related to Hardy Pickett? Hardy's Hardy Hardy uncle. Yeah. Hardy was Raymond. Now, where did you meet? Uh, that was in that in the was in our the that, big courthouse, uh, courtroom. The courtroom. You see, when we got when we were elected in 1950, the ceiling in that side was 14 feet, 15 feet high, and so we needed more space. So we just put a partition, a, wall, a floor, and made the ceilings low up there and down there. You, they're still in there, I think. They were. When well, we they're were. renovating. But, well, they were. They last time I was there. your state? Your that's the place. thing I was looking for. That's the, that wasn't finished. See, but I, this is so funny because you know I work with Jane. You do? Yeah, uh -huh. in the same office now, and have for seven years. But I don't think I'd have ever recognized her. What year did you say, Norman? Fifty. That's fifty-eight. It had to be fifty-eight because that's when they were. Thirty years ago. Oh, nice. The date on there. Yeah, you should. Put the date on fifty-eight. I know. And that. people's names, you know. You put all the names on there. Oh, isn't I can't I'll believe that. Yeah. Well, she was working then in 58? She just started down there. She started in 58. You know, that looks like that says 61 or something. It I'm could not be 61, but I I'm say if 58 oh, is you when, the when you... Yeah, the calendar. You can almost see it. Yeah, these are all glasses. Yeah. That's 61. Well, but she, had she just started there? Just started, yeah. And she started when we... She come there and wanted the job, and uh, Lloyd Taylor, he was a clerk, uh -huh. and he says that he could hire another girl. Uh -huh. She was the only clerk we had, a, a girl we had, yeah. that did the typing. And John Aguilar, he was the, had this man's job. But this man, uh, uh, John died, see. He'd been with him for 40 years, I guess, as a clerk. And he knew, let's say, he'd run in our county practice, because these farmers, they only come in once a week, did. Mm -hmm. When I got elected, I had to come in at least twice a week as chairman, and sometimes three times a week to sign checks to uh, prove something. Hmm. It's a lot different. Right. <laughs> so this is this is that, yeah. that could be sixty-one, but I, uh, fifty-eight is when they went and took off. It's when I mean, took they were elected in fifty-eight and took office in uh, in uh, we went out in sixty-two, so we started in fifty-eight, January fifty-eight. Here's the and that's what it, that, see, they've, they've, they've got, they're putting dirt in there now. See, this was all filled up level when it was done, finished. This is why it was just open? Yeah, coming soon. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. that, you see, this is the mill race. It, it isn't finished. Right. See the dirt? See the dirt there? Okay, now where is the gas station? What part of this building is the gas station? Way back here. See, this is... It went way back. Way, it went 100 and 180 feet on this side and 140 on this side. Okay. Could I get you a cup of coffee, tea, soft drink? You know, I made cookies yesterday. No, I, I'm just fine, thank you. That does say 61. Mm -hmm. That's when the picture was seen. Mm -hmm. That's good it's there. Right. <laughs> I can see a resemblance, but gee, I, you know, it's so funny. Right? She's got that a, a, a the gray white spot right, right up on top. Well, I saw course, the other night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. There's the... That's me when I was uh, about four years old. And this is a reproduction of it. That, that, that was taken off of this. Uh -huh. And you weren't the youngest, were you? I'm the oldest of the second crop. You're the oldest of the yeah. Right. says it's second crop. Second crop. He was the oldest of five. Of the five, okay. Yeah. Now this is uh, when the bowling alley. Bowling alley, uh -huh. right? I did write on the back of that, I think. Right. I would have read it. Uh -huh. The names of the people. Now, here. That's Joe Clark. Oh, yeah. You know him. I that's Bill Filbert. Uh, me. Yeah. And Boris. Mm -hmm. And Alvy Baker. 
And I, I'm not sure who that is. Look on the back, Norm. Did I write anything? Let's see. Forces are Republican. I was Democrat, and so was the so was the state. Right. Uh, Joe Clark. Clark. They were they were there for some reason. This is Flint Coat Pipe. Company. That's right. Joe that's Clark represented it. Flint Coat Pipe. This is in Ohio. Maybe no. You this did go somewhere. Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, we went to. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Is this the first ball down the that's lane? Right. That's right. <laughs> <good. laughs> did you ever bowl? Yeah, yeah, we used to bowl. I wasn't a good... Oh, look at the trophies over here. I was on a good team, but I wasn't a good bowler. Once in a while, I'd throw in something. Like that. <laughs> but I keep them. <laughs> <laughs> you were enjoying it? Oh, I had fun. Uh, and I got a picture downstairs, a, a frame picture. Of the, I was president. They wanted me to be president of the Association of County Commissioners. They nominated me, and I declined. I said, I'll, I'll serve on the board of something, but I won't be president because I didn't want the responsibility to get these things together. Right. So Herb Reichel spoke up. I'd like to be. I said, Herb, you're not me. <laughs> this is a picture of all of them. Yeah. Huh. Now, when the road came through, I, you know, uh -huh. they came and they just took uh -huh. off the uh -huh. whole front of the uh -huh. road. Uh -huh. Way back. Just yeah. ha over half of it. See, that's I have a date on the back of that. Or 39. Yeah, that's when it opened. At 39. Yeah, that's, it opened later as a year. This is do we have prices of them? No, See, it wasn't oh. open yet. Oh. No, you know, this picture here, this is the opening picture. You know what's interesting? Right. See the prices of things. Oh, yeah, there. I know. See, this, this was it's finished. Sick. They were yeah. ready to open there. Well, of course, you remember the salaries, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you know that it was. Norm and I went through a depression. We had some kids, yeah. and we lived on $5 a week. I know. That's you could cool. buy the loaf of bread for maybe a quarter. And that's about all you could do at the yeah. I mean. No clothes. We couldn't get any money out of the bank. The banks. I didn't know that was in there. <laughs> this is you? That's me. Oh, I was taking it up to Gettysburg, I guess. It says, uh, yeah, 1924. Yeah, before we were married. Clad, long coat. You know, if <laughs> we lived before the Depression. <laughs> if we lived in New Year's Eve, we're going to be married 61 years. You know, That's are, are you going, over there are you going Christmas. out to Turf Valley again? No, we decided we've been going and we used to enjoy it. Now it's a younger crowd and, and it is so yeah. noisy you can't talk That's to right. the person sitting beside so, you. Yeah. Just me yesterday and said, Look, no, let's make a place. I'd like to go to we'll go, we've been with the Jaegers for a few years, crazy. Yeah. But you know, half the fun of going out is visiting yeah. with people. Nice. And when the new no, yeah. music is so loud, it's such a I want to know why it was in Norman Moxley and Ladies' Night <laughs> at the Rotary Club. Well, I was president. I know. He that, was president. That sounds we cute. Always have, uh, we always have, not have the ladies. all the ladies. Uh, <laughs> we're going this Friday to Ladies' Night. Is it? Uh, <laughs> it's her family now. We where, what, when was I that? I didn't write that. That was in 52. The this Times wrote that, too. Oh, yeah. 52. Dance the night away. Uh, well, you've saved a lot of that. We've got so many pictures, and they're not, you know, I know the world will look for them. Oh, there he is. That's right. his plane. Just got back. Oh, and wow. I went through it. He made a hundred missions over there. I was lucky to get back. Well, he shows the hole in his wings. See that hole? Yeah. Weren't you lucky that he came back? Sure. So many in his squad. Mm -hmm. And you know, when they got married, Jean and Bob got married in Phoenix, Arizona. She's from Phoenix. And we flew down for, for the wedding, and one of his... Um, Attendance was an Air Force ball. Here it is. Oh, that's that. This is in his flying gear. We have a grandson. Is it his son? Or is it one of his It's his daughter. It's daughter. Isn't that interesting? But you see family characteristics. There's a, I, I don't tell you about oh, the mustard the, clean. Yeah, the pagan spirit. You know, we always hear the story of uh, Warfield and the pagan spirit. Mm -hmm. Dr. Charles Alexander Warfield. Yeah, well, they, were all the house. House. They, right. they lived it. Oh, Nehemiah lived in Anaheim County near Annapolis. Oh, right. And they got the heat them after this burning of the pagan spirit. The British, you know, took over. Right. And they left there 
he had to leave there, and he went up to the foot of the Catoctin Mountains, they call it. And that's where that's he... That's Montgomery he, County. Uh-huh. That's where he uh, relocated then. That's where he relocated, but some of his offspring came down here and lived where McGill used to live. What's the name of that French restaurant out there? You mean King's Contrivance? King's Contrivance. So much that had... He, uh, McGill told me all this, that yeah. they lived on the right-hand side of uh, old Columbia Pike, which is uh, to duel now, uh -huh. at Stonehouse set up on the hill. Apple. And uh -huh. and one of the Neil one of Neil Myers, Neil Myers branch owned the ferry there. Uh, he uh -huh. had he owned that. And yeah. Hawkins, Jim Clark's wife, yeah. grandmother was related to Mom. She was a mom. she was a mom. Oh my. Yeah. You know, I often said you don't talk about anybody in Harris County because they might be mm -hmm. dead. <laughs> yeah, it used That's to be right. that way. Oh, I know. But now right. the ca county's changing. Uh -huh. That's why I'm glad he's no longer in politics yeah. because the county's grown and so have the headaches. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Now yeah, this is. These are all uh, your. Well, now let me get five of It's on the back, uh, Norm. I, I wrote it. I know who it is. You're going to have to tell me. Uh, <laughs> to make the this is Howard Streak, who was my nephew. Oh. He okay. was born. Four years before I was born. That's uh -huh. nephew, half nephew, if you want to call it that. You know, my oldest sister, oldest half sister. So, yeah, he was born in 1901, I was born in 1905. Uh -huh. And this is his sister, Lillian. And this is me, and that's Russell. You can still see yeah. Russell look like yeah. that. Right. And John Streaker, this one, and that one's brothers, and this was a sister, and that's me. And so you were all cousins? Nephew, uh, ne uh, niece, uh, nephew. Yeah. See, Except they're the same, the same age as cousins. <laughs> yeah. They're older. Yeah. It's yeah. Same age, yeah, but they're older. Right. And you were, where was that taken? Do you have any idea? Uh, yes, I know where it was taken. I can tell you where it was taken. Right down in this old house. Where you got house you was saw it in your there, old family house? On the lawn. See, oh. to put that big square out there yeah. on the lawn and took it. Right. And you were what? About two? No, I was, uh, what, what the date say? With no date. Well, I, I had to be born two. You um, think um, you were born um, two? A year and a half oh, older than okay. him. Well, then he's about a year right? Yeah, don't you think? Probably, yes. I was about three. Maybe. And he was about uh, three, uh, two and a half. I'm uh, almost a year older than he is. Are any of, are any of the streakers still living? Huh? Are any of the streakers still living? Are yes. these three? No. Yeah, she is. She is. She's in Hudson. She lives right there in West Frankfurt. She's, she's still living. He's dead. And he's, and he's dead. Did you know Harold Stromberg? Uh, yeah, he's Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob. Well, right. he married right. Janie and Norman were half brother and sister. Mr. And she's the one that pictures on that one. You said you'd like to take a picture. Yeah, right. Okay, what I'd like to do is take a few of these things with me and okay. copy them, and then I'll bring them back bring them to back you. To you. Of course. I will. Listen, I <laughs> Yeah, I I have borrowed a lot of stuff and I've brought everything back. Oh, don't worry. This, okay. this was made. That's that's nice. Pete Stromberg, nineteen forty six. Norman used to have that's pretty Pete hair. Stromberg. No, that's me. Well, I was gonna say that looks like a Moxley. <laughs> Why did you say Pete Stromberg's office? Pete, Pete Stromberg's office. He made it. Oh. He took the picture down the Times office. He it, still it, has hair pretty hair. Used to have. Well, I think he still has pretty hair. My father had hair just like this. He had pretty wavy hair and he grayed very early. And my mother had wavy hair. Do you know my, our daughter Marilyn married Jim Embry? Oh, see, I I know Jim, but I'm all right. I think I married her younger kid. Yeah. Anyway, she's got the daughter curly hair. Oh, good God! Jim was telling me about what an inventor you are. That yeah, I I got I got a, I was looking through them pictures and I see a little uh, patent paper for a patent that I made in 1929. I saw where no you patented a either. box that. Where you would pay your your yeah, I, fine? I, well, I, yeah. uh, you know what? Know. Did you? Uh, uh, the the uh, patent attorney bought half interest. Oh, he did. Yeah. And you believe me, what happened? We tried to put them out. It's like in Pennsylvania had a lot. The damn judges objected to it because it took their job. Yeah. And and I, look, I we sold it to a, a for a little bit of nothing almost to a guy that makes. Uh, uh, stamps that when you uh, stamp a check and it cuts it through, it used to cut right through the date and everything. And he he took a lot of interest in that thing. 
and we sold it uh, to him, and he said he, I believe he got them in California. He told me, but I've couldn't in Pennsylvania. Places. I've seen him around, you know, but I didn't know you had invented Well, the woman was ingenious. When he was a little kid, he made his own sled up. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, Jim Embry was saying, uh, yeah, anybody well, in the yeah. family needs, if anything breaks, go to grandfather. Is that right? I don't <laughs> care what it is. Listen, I, I never had, we never had anything for Chris, not even a price, because we lived back here on this farm. We were kids. The girls had doll babies, and I had wham, wham. When I was uh, seven years old, I saw the old corn out here down here and set up on high legs like that on stone pillars and my mother and father been down to the and they come back and the song stopped this and I was down down to the house see I was about two, 300 yards I guess from this corner and I saw him stop and put something on this corner out. and I went around to come around and looked under there two sets of tools a big set like this a, you know a, 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 Kids do, and then a small set for us. I knew damn well it was for. I didn't think no Santa Claus after that. <laughs> then you used the tools to make a sled. Is that what you did? Well, I worked in the, the uh, blacksmith shop. So it a, you, it's, uh, you can see it in that old picture that, that you had there. There's a blacksmith shop oh, right, yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah, you said that you started out learning uh, to be a blacksmith. I did. I, well, yeah. I, worked, I worked in there and made. Look, I'm only a kid and. I, 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 on weekends or holidays, he'd have me in there helping the whole boat. You know, the... kids didn't get into mischief then we because had they were kept busy at home. I liked it. Well, so, look what, how good it's uh, held you. Well, look, <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, here's what I want to tell you. Anyhow, I went to school. Old Rock, seven grade, and I was on the board. Eight, eight, 17, 18 years old. I go down the way when they're coming. And by God, they had these little slits, but that long, but that wide, and little, little runners on them, like that. Well, my father always had a lot of lumber. He'd go to the sawmill and buy the remnants whenever they moved yeah. for nothing on them, and haul it on and stack it and cover it. So he had some lumber that was just about that thick. Yeah. And the really board was about that wide, but it was about three, four, five eighths of an inch thick. And it looked like them runners that they had under about that thick. So it soaked, and I had yeah, old vice down there, and I saw two pieces off about that long, and I put it in the vice, and I a drawing knife. I don't know, you know what a drawing knife is. It's a knife you hold to your hands, there's a knife crossing you. Man, I cut down this code that nice like that, like there's work, just make it, but didn't have no metal runners to put on it, had to make it smooth. Then, when I put boards on top of it, I used, uh, Cinema material, I'd like to with no plywood to it. Mm -hmm. And there were strips like that wide and like that thick. I tried to drive a nail in the damn oak and it split. So he had a drill, drill press, to turn it by hand, and a bracing bit. I just drilled little holes in there, a little bit smaller than the nail, put one nail in each piece and drilled it down in the runner, setting up just like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. you? Yeah. And the first one I made it longer so I'd have a place to hold my hand. I put a grip on the first piece up. <laughs> and then the next one to make that wide apart, crossways. Uh -huh. And I had one nail in each one and I found out something. If I want to turn, I could pull that that got in there and it, it, it would turn, go right around the curve. And the ones they had, they couldn't turn around the curve. <laughs> I had the only one. You needed turn. a patent right down right in there. there. <laughs> All right. So that's the way the flexible flyers are now. I mean, well, you know, they you got to where you could turn yeah, them. Well, you could turn them. Runners, yeah. You, yeah. The first one I got in 1915, they had the fire in Ellicott City, and I got the runners from old man Charlie Butcher, who was wealthy, and that was a lot of money, and he spent it, but they were, <laughs> they were it, the slave burned up, it was in the basement, and I got the runners. And I slave said, burned, and you had the runners. And I got the runners, Good. and the he gave them to me. That was the mill fire? Huh? Well, you no, said it was no. a fire in Alaska City. What was burned? You said in 1915. Look. The slave burned. The I'll tell you where it burned. Okay. It burned from right where this stopped up to the corner where Taylor's is. Taylor's was a post office. Mm -hmm. exactly. That all burned out. But that stone building was a saloon. 
at the corner of the pipe. The corner of Columbia Pike. And it was right at Columbia Pike, and it was real sharp. It was a real sharp corner there after that all burned down. But the stone didn't burn out. Right. The stone part did. And they part that whole thing, whole block out. On down to where the fire was. Where, where, where the, the, that alley. Tree. There's an alley. There was an alley. It burned to that alley. And what, that was in 1915? 1915. And then after that is when Taylors came in the and Taylor, built... The Taylors was across the street where John Vaughn shoe place yeah. was. That's where Ike Taylor started now. It's just come here. It's an optician. That's what he was. Well, before Vada though, there was a Italian shoemaker in there, wasn't there? I don't remember. He told me he bought the shoe business from Vada. He's an Italian. Not Italian. He's been oh. Greek. Yeah, he's Italian. There must have been Greek or something. It was not Italian. Well, I know Ike Taylor had a had a, a, a store in there. In the same place where I'm sure it was right next to that. I, I know it was right along there from the pictures that I saw. I thought it was in that corner. It may have been. But then when he went to build across well, the street, the, he, there had been a fire he, and it was gone. The when, they, was gone. That, uh, when they had this fire, it laid empty for, you know, just a coal over it. Put a board up in front of it to block it off. And, uh, Charlie Budkey built where Sam Cap has got his office, you know where he's got his office there. And the telephone company was in there. And uh, Vaughn Horse had a store there. It's a red brick front, it's yeah. reddish brick. And you walk in on it like that and you go into the telephone company, if I remember. That was built after that fire. After that, that's what after I was saying. It was all brick, so brick after the fire. Apartments upstairs. And Taylor built that big building over there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He must have had some friends of financing because he wasn't that wealthy then. 1924 or something. The date is up there. When they built it, when Taylor built it, I think there's a date on that building. Well, it stayed idle. I can't, so good God, I can't remember it being empty that long. I can't. No, I don't know. Well, his son well, told me he remembered thing. playing there. Uh, it was an empty lot before his father built it. Yeah. But that well, was I after guess the it fire was. then. It must oh, it was burned in 15. I know it was 1915. Right, so it must have been empty for a period of time. But, you know, if, if you stop and think about all the fires that Ellicott City has had through the years, I'm surprised there's anything left. Yeah, that's right. Really if there hadn't been some of those stone buildings, you know, I don't think it would have been because it seems like all the frame buildings were burned. Did you ever tell her about Bob Weigel's store, what, well, what you had to do there? Did I tell you I've got store right below? Five and ten. Bob uh, was across street on the street. north side. Yeah, well, I, I can remember that. That, I, oh, that was a stone front, uh -huh. and I, I put a store in. I bought that for $1,500. That property? Yeah. But yeah. it was only one room deep, wasn't it? Was it was only one room deep. I'm trying to think what's there today, because I don't remember. Some of antique? Antique. Or I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. I remember, remember going across there. After we get the boys' haircut at Katie's, we yeah. go across to Weigel. That's right. But I don't remember what building it was now. It's a building that has a show window. And the, the slope, uh, the, the roof slopes like that. It comes from up here, slopes out, and the window's way out here. I'll have to look at it again, because I can't remember. Well, yeah. it was across from Rosenstock's old yeah, place. Yeah, right. Well, anyhow, the Greeks were in the, uh, down there where we had the party for Sam Kaplan. Uh -huh. Well, it was just diagonally across from it. Well, it was a stone front, just like this building next door. And you had to go four steps to get into the, the, the first floor of the store. Mm -hmm. It was just about 25 feet deep, 20 feet deep, I believe it was. But you had to go up steps like this, and wood. Then they had steps going up to a park, a house where they lived. It wasn't park, it was one hole above. So I negotiated to buy that place on the corner of the Tiber Alley, towards uh, where that vacant lot is now, mm -hmm. uh, from, from Jim, uh, Jim uh, uh, Coronia. I negotiated to buy that. That was a lunchroom. Uh, uh, something there, but I was going to put a pool room down there, because I had the pool room down where they remodeled the building below the railroad track. I, and I hole upstairs, I cut it out, and put a pool room in there for my brother. But he was a pretty good pool shooter. Below the railroad. Below the, below the railroad, between the river and the railroad. What's the name of that? Oh, in uh, the Appalachian outfit, uh, Clark's, that was Clark's, Clark. or Radcliffe's old building? Radcliffe's old building. I, there was a pool hall there? Upstairs. 
uh, Talbert owned it. Bridge Market? Yeah, Bridge Market. Talbert owned it. Yeah. Talbert owned up the street where the yeah, Talbert place is now, mm -hmm. too. Well, anyhow, uh, I had a pool room at Woodmore for my brother. And he plastered and went to run. Jim? No, uh, or Stan, the one died just recently. Oh, okay. Uh, no, well, that was a nephew just died. But yeah. So it was some. Sometime. He died. I don't know. I don't know. Go ahead. Okay. Anyhow, uh, he was a plaster, worked for me, and he wanted to get some extra money, and he was he knew how to operate a pool room, because that's all he did when he was a kid down here at Old City. He I had a hell of a time getting him to go to learn to create a plaster. <laughs> So anyhow, he wanted to open pool room over there, and I went over there, and I knew the man that owned the building, right at the forks of Quinnock uh, Avenue, and, uh, and uh, I forget, what's the name of the road that goes in front, goes up the hill, past Kittis, what's the name of that, Windsor Mill Road, right on the I thought you could talk about Bob Weigel, for now you're over Woodlawn. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm leading up to work, work, how I come to get them. Well, just get Anyhow, uh, it went dry. I mean, it was, uh, when liquor came by, I couldn't get any beer or anything over there because the man was very religious and he told me I couldn't get it. So I went out over there and I come over here and talked to Carl. And he said, you want to put, we rent it to you so much a month, five-year lease, and, uh, and I, put, I, I had to do all the repair. So I took all the petitions out upstairs, and I put heavy, the heavy wooden beams, they were about that high and about that thick, up there to carry the weight of the roof and everything. And one big room up there, and uh, there was no bathroom. They had no bathroom. So and had a little bar, just a small bar for beer, nothing else. And uh, we, uh, he run it for two or three years. And I was working over in Washington. I had a big job over, uh, over at Alexander High School. And it was my turn, that's when I was in the partner, and it was my turn to run the job. And he stayed here and looked at the business, running a small job here. This was doing depression days. So, Oh, Dick Colbert, oh man, we'll always sign, you had to have somebody sign the license. It's only a $15 license, and, he, and Dick Colbert wouldn't sign for the license. And I came home with Stan and told me, he said, I can't get the license because Dick Colbert won't sign. And Pop said, that old slewfoot so-and-so, he says, we'll, uh, we'll go up the street and buy one. So I went up and negotiated to buy that building, and he told the lawyer that he was married, but he hadn't lived with his wife for years. She's still in Greece. In those days, they had a dower, you know. A woman's married to anybody, and they sell it, and she outlives him. She's got a third interest in the damn thing. So my lawyer advised me not to take it. I said, let's go across that and buy San Kern building. That was where Bob Wagle lived. Went across that and bought that for $1,500. But that had to be all rebuilt, you see. That over there was already built big enough for a pool. So I... Uh, I went, I went in there and I bought it. I didn't know it had grand rent on it, 30, 30, uh, $33 a year grand rent right. uh, on that lot. The lot goes way up back of that church. And then did you make that into a pool hall? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, or, I was going to, uh -huh. and that's what I was going to do. So I got in there work and took 900 ton of rock out there. I worked the whole summer. Uh, I had two he men there. You blasted down there uh, uh, in the back. In back of the store. Behind right back what, the whole, five I tore the whole back out because it was only uh, it wasn't stone in the back of the stone on each side like that and the front. The wall was that thick. It, golly, I, I That's kept, not one of the restaurants today, Coco Lane. No, 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 no. Oh. It's up, up this way from Coco Lane. It's a stucco top. You, above the, uh, the show windows is stucco. Is you there start? a rest shop along in there somewhere? But they change so much. I I'm don't sure. know. There's I don't Two doors east of the Old Tapco National Bank. Okay. There's a frame building between it and the bank. Oh, and, and, and the drugstore. The drugstore first. I mean, it's a, a brick truck with Norton's drugstore. Yeah, okay, that's the... Uh, then the next was Heavey's house, and the next was this building. Okay. I took all that stone out of there. Get all the stone houses you see up Columbia Pike, uh, built out of that, 
I took it out again to be come, come get it. They'd come get it all and all. But when I took the floor up, the stone was right up under the floor, the rock, solid rock. And I had to blow, go right out of there. And the stone wall when it was built it was sitting on top of the rock. It had a slope like that, sitting right on top of it. So that's why, because it was so difficult to blast. They so anyhow, <laughs> I drilled right alongside of the, the wall, right up against it. Holes about that deep, and uh, I used small dynamite, about inch dynamite. Uh, uh, what'd your next door neighbor think when you well, were done? Wait a minute, I'll tell you about that. <laughs> so it, uh, this side and that side. Oh, it's got a daisy. You see, when you cover it, you had to cover it so it falls up the hill. In the back, there was nothing back there, see, but the hill. And that's where you help, help you to go back. Put it on the slant. If, it, if this is the center of the hole, right here, you set it like this, right like that, and that'll raise up, and, and all the spalls will go that way. See, it won't go straight up. But if you put it straight over, it raise it up like that, and shoot out the side. The cover, you know, you have to have a mat. So I, I uh, blew that, and I didn't even hear it fall. And I must have had 10 sticks of dynamite pieces. I put a little piece in each hole. Mm -hmm. All you do is fire one, and they all go off. Jar sends them off. You, you don't have to, if you've got a, a, a rod a hole with dynamite in, you just put a, a, a fuse in one of them, and every one of them will go off because the, the dynamite don't go off from burning, it goes off from the explosion. Yeah. A, so, anyhow, my accommodation, I didn't hear it go off, I thought it hadn't gone off. I had my car sitting right out front, touch the battery so it would send it off. And my brother in law, her, her, her brother in law was working there with because he worked at Stone Curry Granite. It wasn't much to do. This is 34. And uh, by the time I did, I went in and I looked at the crack. Right straight along that wall to the thing that took a saw and saw it. Then I got way back, but I'd gone way down in the back, snaked three holes under that rock that got higher above where the floor is now. And I pushed in the next 15 foot deep. I drilled them in there. And uh, I blew put five, uh, five sticks in each hole. Oh, wow. When I blew that, <laughs> he you could have blown it off the map. Look, when I blew that, you, I didn't hear that go off. I said, my God, that, that thing didn't go off. It was so it, Whenever you don't hear it, that's when it does the work. If you hear it, it flies out. And it does it wrong. Yeah, <laughs> like a shotgun. When it, you know, if, if that shell didn't come out of that gun, I mean, that's a, a report, you know, something was cracked and it didn't make much noise. So, uh, it raised that thing up first. And those walls are sitting right on top of that stone. It, God knows how far down it cracked. But see, that's granite. You, you crack, it's that granite, you know, that's what did it. And the walls on that side, they're that thick on each side, stone walls. And in the front, I just put a big beam across there to hold the front up. Didn't take the front out at all, see? Front, only I stuck with it. Because that was my business, see? Yeah. I did that. And I, then I put a perfect wall above. I made three apartments, and that door for Bob Wagner's got a mezzanine floor. And if you've ever been in there, you remember that mezzanine floor. Well, it was so crowded. <laughs> it was I don't know how Bob ever found anything I don't know in that place. But you see, the mezzanine floor was uh, uh, the width of the building, and uh, steps come down. You went up the steps, and it was seven feet above, and seven feet below. And and uh, he had twice the room. Uh, not twice the room, but a third more room than he would have had if he hadn't had it. Fifty five dollars a month you rented. Well, big deal. Times have changed, right? Well you only bought it for fifteen hundred. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I spent ten thousand on building it. Yeah. Yeah, I did or did. I, I had three apartments. And then well, you sold it you sold I it sold just it before the blood, blood did the flood. I sold, it, the blood, the blood. I sold it in 1951. Your woman, she might get tired to of you touching her constantly. Bob hates that. My he, son hates but that. But he has his habit. I don't mind it, it's but that habit. it's a habit. No, that's right, that's what constantly. it is. It's a habit. It's to get your attention to make sure you're looking. <laughs> you know how the fella got the mule's attention, don't you? <laughs> no, yeah, no. He took a single tree and walked over and said, I'm going to get his attention. and went over and hit him with a walk right in the head. He said, what you do that for? You're going to kill him. If you kill him, hell, he said, I got his attention, didn't I? <laughs> but he did sell this building then. How I long it before the $10, flood? No, just for the pay. Oh. Just for, to help him. He in, was a nice man. 51 or 71? What, when did you sell it? When 51. Was the, and when was the flood? 
70, 70, too. 70, well, there was a flood before that. I'm sure. That, that dam, it wasn't no flood. It, the tide, uh, whatever. The tide was, they had a heavy rainfall, 53. 52. <laughs> okay. I was, we were glad we had sold the place. But that didn't do any damage to no, us at all. Uh, it, it, uh, you see, when it could come down real fast, and that building, there used to be a building set right next to the, to the uh, off the ti over the, the Tiber, yeah. where you go in the Tiber Street on the right hand side. It was a, 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 where Easton kept his uh, uh, carriages, carriages and things. And the water come up under it and got the bouncing up and down, and it fell down like that and made a dam. And the water had to come out somewhere, and it come out through the fort, come out through Sam Catholic Fort. I've got a and picture of the, of the firemen hosing down the mud. I bet you saw me on that picture then, because they took a lot of them, and I was down there the whole time. I was commissioner, and I was right down there with them. This is one of Mr. Shipley's pictures. I bet got you I'm on it. Copy. I'm going to have to take uh, borrow some of these and get going, because I've got oh. um, my son and I are going Christmas shopping this afternoon. That's a good job. But, you know, I hate to do it, but he's 26, and I want to buy him a sport jacket, and I can't do it without him. You know what happens in our family? We've got eight grandchildren. Everybody gets a check. I can't do it That's anymore. A, I don't know what to do. I don't blame you. That's you right. You don't want it, don't like it, it doesn't fit, you got to take it back. I'm trying to get this kid to wear something other than blue jeans, so I'm going to take it out. This is tough on me. That's her, that's her uncle, that's me and the coach. Now where that. was that? At the ocean? Uh, no. Uh, I don't know where that was. That's the swimming pool. Or is it a lake? Uh, it's a lake. Uh, it's not a lake. I don't know why being able to tell you. Oh, wasn't that fancy? Yeah, the boy. Lake Shore might have been. Or Hanson oh. Beach. One of the, did you, you used to go over like the Better Than Beach and those places? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hanson Beach. Uh, that was right down there, Stony Creek. She's not interested. Well, those are nice, but those Old are the kinds of pictures. Well, and it's nice to have family pictures. Our kids are interested. You know, the grandkids. And you should write on those. Steve sure is, anyway. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I see.